Hello and welcome to my channel. Recently I was reflecting a lot about controllers for the brushless motors. And as you all know, I usually use Odrive for this. This is a really nice controller, it's not very expensive. If you look on the alternatives, it's very powerful, it's very agile, it's good. But there is some drawbacks. And for me the main drawback is that you need to solder a lot of wires. This controller can drive two motors. So you have three wires from each motor, around five wires from each encoder. You also need to connect the serial communication. You also need power and braking resistor. So in total you have something like 20 wires. And this is really complicated to put all these things with all these 20 wires in small space. When you don't have the problem with the space, this is perfect. What I really like, I like the solution which they use for the actuators. When they put the controller at the back of the motor like this, it's compact, small and uh, there is no many wires. This is one example. This is a controller from the company MJ Bots. They have a really nice YouTube channel. This motor is directly connected to the controller and the encoder is built in in this controller. There is no much wires and all what you need to connect is two wires for the power supply and two wires for the CAN bus. And when you have many controllers like this, you just connect one after another. So you only need to have two wires for the power and two wires for the CAN bus through entire robot arm. I'm 100% sure that both these controllers are very powerful, very agile and capable of a lot of amazing things. But there is one controller which has really nice track record. This is a controller from the MIT Mini Cheetah Robot Dog. You all saw this video when this robot dog makes a backflip. This is amazing. I cannot make a backflip. I will break my neck. And what is nice is that this controller is open source, meaning that we can try to replicate it and see how it works. And this is exactly what we're going to do today. I looked at the open source documentation and I found these main components. So the brain of the controller is STM32F446 and this brain it talks to the driver DRV8323RS. This driver makes its magic and sends the signal to the MOSFETs and these MOSFETs they control motor. And we have an encoder MA700. This encoder watches the position of the motor. And for the CAN bus communication, we have the MCP2542 transceiver. This works kind of like a biological system. When the brain talks to the spine, the spine sends the signal to the nerve system. This nerve system controls the muscles and the eye watch for the muscles. And also for the communication, we're using an ear and mouse. Cool! And with different colors. All these components are tiny, small SMD components, which is really difficult to solder. That is why I'm going to use the development boards. And I actually started the assembly. We have this board with a microcontroller. We have this board with the driver and the MOSFETs. We have this board with the CAN bus transceiver. And over there, behind the motor, there is a board for the encoder. And of course, we have a motor. Okay, with these boards, our controller is quite big. But this is for the prototype, for the test, so it should be good enough. This is the names of these development boards, if you are interested, and for your reference. In terms of the electronics, the only difference between this kind of prototype and the real MIT Mini Cheetah controller is in the MOSFETs. Here on these development boards, the MOSFETs are not very powerful, so we cannot drive a big and powerful motor with them. But for the small motor, and for our test, it's good enough. The sensing resistors they are also different, but this is a minor detail. And surprise, surprise, I have the second prototype. I built this one first, I wired everything and I checked it works. And that's why I decided to build the second one. By the way, this is an Arduino with a CAN bus shield and with this Arduino I control this controller. Control controller. Perfect. And we need to replicate all these wires over here. I'm just wondering how long it's gonna take. It took me only 20 minutes and 36 wires. For the first prototype it took me around 6 hours. Big improvement. To power up these controllers we are going to use the battery. Because these controllers 
when the motor accelerates, they take energy from the battery and when the motor decelerates, they put this energy back to the battery. So our power source should be able to give the energy and to take the energy back and the battery is perfect for this. It can discharge and charge. And now we should take care of the firmware. The entire controller is developed by this guy from MIT, Ben Katz, during his PhD thesis. This firmware is on this ARM Embed website. Also on this website you can find the information about our development board and how to use it. So basically you need to update your driver, you need to update the firmware on this nuclear board and afterwards you can compile this firmware. For this they have the online compiler. But because our prototype is different from original MIT controller, we need to change some settings. I have a long list what I changed. These settings accounts for the difference between our prototype and the real MIT controller. And after you need to upload this file on the development board, for this you just push the compile button, it creates a binary file, afterwards when you connect the development board to the computer, it shows it as the external disk and you need to put this binary file into this disk and it's done. This controller it has two ways to communicate, the serial port and CAN bus. The serial port you use once. In order to set up the maximum current, the CAN ID, to do the calibration and stuff like this. And afterwards, when all setup is done, you use the CAN bus to set the position, speed and to control the controller basically. So serial is just for the setup, CAN bus when you use the robot. To connect the serial I use TerraTerm program. It's detected as external drive. Now connect the serial port. Now we connect the battery and we push the reset button. Immediately over here we have the information about our board and if we push escape we have the commands. So we can do the motor mode, calibrate encoder, we can do the setup, display encoder and set zero position. The first thing to do is setup. I already put all the parameters for my motor and for my driver board. You can also do the calibration. So we have the electrical offset and we have the winding resistance. Also you can display the encoder data. This is very useful. Like this you can see if your encoder is working. And now let's look at the CAN bus. As I told I'm using Arduino with the SparkFun CAN bus shield. Let's quickly look at the Arduino code. This Arduino code is inspired by the code made by the developer of this controller, Ben Katz. This is a limit values for the parameters which we're going to send through the CAN bus. This is a variable which we send through the CAN bus. And this is a variable which we receive from the CAN bus. So the position, velocity and torque. So here we initialize the CAN bus. Here we set up all the pins. This is the main loop. And in this loop, if the joystick is pushed up, we increase the position value. If it's pushed down, we decrease the position value. And if the joystick is pushed right, we enable controller. If it's in the left, we disable controller. Here we send the CAN message. And here we receive the CAN message. And we print some data to the serial monitor. So we print the desired position, the output position, the output speed and the output torque. This is a function to enable controller. This is a function to disable controller. This is a function to put the controller at zero. I don't use it here. This is a function to send the CAN message. And this is a function to receive CAN message. And this is two additional functions. So in the message to the CAN bus we send the position, speed, stiffness, damper and torque. And inside controller this values is used like this. So the reference torque is equal to the stiffness times the error in the position plus the damper times the error in the velocity plus this torque. And after this value of the torque is used in the controller in order to understand how much we should turn the motor. Let's connect everything and see if it works. Power for Arduino, power for the microcontroller, power for the driver, reset the microcontroller. So this is a desired position, this is a real position and this is a speed and this is a torque. So now the motor is disabled so I can rotate it easily and if I rotate it you see that the position is changes. So this is good. Now let's put it to zero close to the desired position. And uh, now we need to go to the torque mode. 
but I'm afraid. Okay. So the motor holds its position. Now if I do up, down, it rotates. And the values changes. Everything looks cold. This is great. And you see, if I try to rotate the motor from its position, the torque value increases. Now let's look at the serial plotter. There is some offset on the torque. I don't know what is it, but okay. Now the motor holds its position. So if I try to rotate it, the torque goes up. And if we run the controller, This is cool. And also each time when I make a move, there is a torque in the acceleration phase and torque in the deceleration phase. Let me try to stop it. So in the acceleration, there is a positive torque and in the deceleration phase, there is a negative torque. And there is a little torque in the constant speed. So the green line is the speed, the yellow is the torque. It's super agile. Great. The motor is cold board is cold. Today we have built and tested MIT Mini Cheetah controller. It's really fast and agile controller and I really like that it gives you the fast measurements of the torque, position and speed. This should be perfect for the collaborative robot. Like this you can easily detect all kind of collisions. But this kind of test we're going to do in one of the future video and in order not to miss this video don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also it would be nice if you can put the like to my video and one or several comments. Another way of supporting my channel is via PayPal or Patreon. All the links in the description to this video. And here's the names of the all people who support me on Patreon. Thanks to them I'm doing this kind of projects. And thanks to them this channel is alive. And thanks to them we are going to the bright future. Yeah, robot revolution is coming. By the way, recently my channel hit 50,000 subscribers. Now we're aiming for the 100,000 subscribers. Stay safe, good luck with your projects and see you next time.